I like this. And this one, I don't know if I had it or they put it. But they call these guys the professionals, right? So your professional antigen presenting cells, right? Where their job is to pick up viruses, bacteria, anything out there, right? And present it are who? These three cells are very important. We've been looking at them. Two of them at least. One starts with an M. Macrophages. One starts with a D. D. Dendritic cells, right? And we haven't really touched on them yet, but B cells do this too. They process and have to present to T cells, right? In order for T cells to get activated. In the case of B cells, though, it's for them to get activated as well. So this chart, notice the biggest professional presenter <laughs> is the good old dendritic cell, which we really haven't talked much about, right? Um, he can activate both types of naive T cells and memory cells. He can either further activate effector, right? Once uh, something's already started, he can continue to communicate with effector helper and cytotoxic T cells, okay? Macrophages, he's pretty good, right? Except look, naive cytotoxic T cells, it says nothing about helper T cells, right? You see that difference in this list? The only one missing is this helper T cell right here at the top. And he really is our primary one for starting the, the response when it's the very first time we see an antigen known as primary. Naive means that these cells have never seen an antigen before. Memory means they've seen it before. Effector means they've seen it, they've been activated, they're out doing their job. Right? B cells, notice down here at the bottom, right, interact with effector CD4 T cells. Right, so these are CD4 T cells that have already been activated by a dendritic cell. And then they're going to interact with the B cell because it also presents via MHC class 2 what it takes in. And what happens is that B cell is going to get activated. Notice they mention a type of T helper T cell here, right, even. They have T and then H for helper and then 2. There are actually two subsets of helper T cells that help drive which way we're going to go or how much in one direction we're going to go. So there's a dendritic cell. And so you can imagine why it got its name, right? See these long cytoplasmic projections? It uses this to grab onto stuff, right? They're not as effective killers, right? But that's really not their job. Their job, as we've seen, is presentation and talking to other cells, right? They're, they're found in the bone marrow. They take up resonance and mature in various tissues. So they're all throughout our body. Um, and, of course, they get their name because they resemble dendrites, right, which are nerve cells that have long cytoplasmic projections. But, of course, they're not nerve cells. <laughs> They're very important white blood cells. Um, and you're not going to see them in your blood, right? They would just travel there a short period of time. They go hang out in tissues, right, all throughout the body. I call these guys, the, my nickname for them is the scouts. Because wherever they are positioned in the body, right, and whatever antigens and things they pick up, then they basically go run and tell T cells what they found. Right? So wherever the nearest group of T cells is, whether it's in the Pryor's patches or the, or the nearest lymph node or your spleen, that dendritic cell goes there and is trying to find a T cell that matches the antigens it's presenting, especially once this guy has become activated. Right? If pattern recognition receptors on its surface 
have recognized, right? Peptidoglycan, lipopolysaccharides, these things that we know are bacteria, right? This guy gets more aggressive. But he is always eating stuff, y'all. Like always gobbling stuff up, right? And presenting it. That's his job. So he can do it both ways. So what are the key features of dendritic cells and how do they function, right? Their main job, right? Is, is to take in foreign substances. So they'll use their toll-like receptors, right? Those pattern recognition receptors to recognize, right, foreign substances. And they'll pick it up and they're going to digest it and present it on MHC class 2 in this case, right? Because they're the only ones that can help activate uh, naive helper CD4 T cells, which can co-stimulate right, and proliferate. So their key feature, right, is antigen presentation. Like that's their main job. And presenting it to T cells, in this case a helper T cell, that are going to really help determine, right, which way we go. So they use their toll-like receptors, uh, the, and then especially if a toll-like receptor is engaged, they really increase their presentation of stuff they've been gobbling up, right? Ex they'll increase that expression of molecules for interaction with T cells. And as I said, they migrate to tissues or into regional lymph nodes, right, to be able to find those naive T cells and activate them. Macrophages, on the other hand, right, they're very good at phagocytosis, right, and intracellular killing, which is great, because we really need that sometimes, right? But they can go one step further and activate our adaptive immune response by presenting to memory T cells a lot of times, right, especially if it's the second time we've seen something. They can also help determine the course of helper T cells, right? Um, and that's in, 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 in the last section, right, that we talk about really get into B cells. So what are the roles of B cells in the adaptive immune response? So they're the ones that produce antibody. But to get them to do that, right, when they their B cell receptor, and actually I have a zoom in, there we go. So see their B cell receptor, which is an antibody, right, can directly interact with an antigen. When that happens, they'll actually take it in, the whole process, and present via MHC class 2. So this is so that they can, they can communicate with an already activated helper T cell. Because remember, helper T cells, CD4, interacts with MHC class 2. And look, they're talking to each other. Look at the cytokine release, right? They're like, oh, yep, T cell says, yep, I recognize that foreign protein that you're presenting. You need to proliferate, right? When they proliferate, you're going to get memory cells, just like you do with T cells. You're going to get more B cells, but these B cells now will go through a differentiation process where they dramatically change, right? So much so that we give them a new name. We call them plasma cells. And they're not going to just have antibody on their surface. They're going to secrete the antibodies, right? So these are proteins they secrete, right? They leave the cell. And there's a clue here as to one of the major changes that happens and why they call it a plasma cell that we're going to zoom in on in a moment. So B cell receptors, right, trap the foreign antigen. They ingest it. They break it down into fragments. The fragments are loaded onto MHC class 2, which can only be assigned to helper T cells, right? They're going to talk to each other. This is going to cause them to differentiate, right, uh, into effector cells, which are plasma cells, which secrete antibodies, and or, notice I said and or, memory B cells, 
So most B cells need this T cell help. Notice the word most. So do we always need that? No. There's an exception we'll talk about later. So antigens, right, they've got to be big enough that they're taken up, processed, and presented by dendritic cells and, and are able to stimulate the immune response, right? So sometimes we want to make a molecule more immunogenic, especially for vaccine prop purposes. So they add stuff, adjuvants, just as it implies, right, is stuff they add to the vaccine to try and get the particular type of immune response they want. Notice I'm not going to ask you about these on the test though, right? So lucky y'all, <laughs> right? But just FYI, 